Hey YouTube, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. So I have a little bit of an educational video for you. I've been tagged a ton on Instagram for this little clip that I'm going to show you. So it's not an after action video, but just a little education piece on flail chest. So I was tagged on Instagram. We'll take a look at it. This is a great example of a flail chest here. A flail chest can be life threatening. This is a little more dangerous than a broken rib. It is still a broken rib, but we'll explain that in just a minute. So this is a great example of a flail chest. A flail chest is three consecutive ribs broken two or more places. So you'll see it like the chest expands and then the broken segment will sink down. When the chest collapses, the broken segment will go up. This is a life-threatening injury that needs to be treated very quickly and aggressively for our patients. A few issues that our flail chest can cause our patient is one, they're going to be short of breath because they're not able to take that deep breath and expand out their lungs, they're gonna get shorter breath very, very quickly on this. We could also have some broken rib pieces that could puncture the lung, puncture the diaphragm, liver, things like that. So that could cause us more problems because now we have bleeding inside the chest cavity as well as a patient who can't take a deep breath. Because our patient cannot take a deep breath, they're gonna have an increased risk of pneumonia later on, but that's later on. Treatment-wise, from the civilian first responder, not a lot you're able to do, honestly and truly. Just recognizing this is what we see. This is not a broken rib. Broken rib, one little broken rib, not a lot we can do there. Not a lot EMS is going to be able to do for it. But if you see a large segment here that is now moving, you've got to recognize that and know that it's a life-threatening injury. You can put a little bit of pressure on there with your hand. Uh, not a lot of pressure. We used to actually teach putting sandbags, bulky dressing on these types of wounds. But that just increases our patient's trouble breathing and makes things worse. If you put a little bit of pressure there, that's probably fine. The patient's going to be in a lot of pain, so I don't know they're going to let you do that. When EMS gets there, we're going to put them on oxygen, and we're going to provide positive pressure ventilations. This could be with a bag valve mask, CPAP. If they don't tolerate that, then we're probably going to put an ET tube, a breathing tube down our throat, and splint it from the inside out. We found that's the best way to splint this type of injury is from the inside. So hope this video helps. Like I said, hope it helps you recognize this is a life-threatening injury. Thank you guys for watching. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember the right gear and the right training.